Chapter 7, The Wildness of Stories. The house was dark. His grandma had finally got his mom to bed and then had gone into Connor's bedroom and shut the door, not asking if he wanted anything out of it before she went to sleep herself. Connor lay awake on the settee. He didn't think he'd be able to sleep, not with the things his grandma had said, not without his mother had looked tonight. It was three full days after the treatment, about the time she usually started feeling better, except she was still throwing up, still exhausted, far, for far longer than she should have been. He pushed the thoughts out of his head, but they returned and he had to push them away again. He must have eventually drifted off, but the only way he really knew he was asleep was the nightmare came. Not the tree, the nightmare. With the wind roaring and the ground shaking and the hands holding tight, but still somehow slipping away. With Connor using all his strength, but it still not being enough. With the grip losing itself, with the falling, with the screaming. No, Connor shouted, the terror following him into a waking into waking, gripping his chest so hard it felt as if he couldn't breathe, his throat choking, his eyes filling with water. No, he said again more quietly. The house was silent and dark. He listened for a moment, but nothing stirred. No sound from his mom or his grandma. He squinted through the darkness to the clock on the DVD player. 12.07. Of course it was. He listened hard into the silence, but nothing happened. He didn't hear his name. He didn't hear the creak of wood. Maybe it wasn't going to come tonight. 12.08, read the clock. 12.09. Feeling vaguely angry, Connor got up and went into the kitchen. He looked out of the window. The monster was standing in his back garden. What took you so long, it asked. It is time for me to tell you the first story, the monster said. Connor didn't move from the garden chair, where he'd sat himself after he'd gone outside. He had his legs pulled up to his chest and his face pressed into his knees. Are you listening, the monster asked. No, Connor said. He felt the air swirl around him violently again. I will be listened to, started the monster. I have been alive as long as this land, and you will pay the respect you owed me. Connor got up from the chair and headed back toward the kitchen door. Where do you think you're going, demanded the monster. Connor whirled round and his face looked so furious, so pained, that the monster actually stood straight up, its huge leafy brown eyebrows raising in surprise. What do you know, Connor spat. What do you know about anything? I know about you, Connor O'Malley, the monster said. No, you don't, Connor said. If you did, you'd know I don't have time to listen to stupid, boring stories from some stupid, boring tree that isn't even real. Oh, said the monster. Did you dream the berries on the floor of your room? Who cares even if I didn't, Connor shouted back. They're just stupid berries. Woo-hoo, so scary. Oh, please, please save me from the berries. The monster looked at him quizzically. How strange, it said. The words you say tell me you are scared of the berries, but your actions seem to suggest otherwise. You're as old as a land and you've never heard of sarcasm, Connor asked. Oh, I have heard of it, the monster said, putting its huge branch on its hips. But people usually know better than to speak it to me. Can't you just leave me alone? The monster shook its head, but not in answer to Connor's question. It is most unusual, it said. Nothing I do seems to make you frightened of me. You're just a tree, Connor said. There was no other way he could think about it. Even though it walked and talked, even though it was bigger than his house and could swallow him in one bite, the monster was still... <laughs> even though it was bigger than his house, could swallow him in one bite, the monster was still, at the end of the day, just a yew tree. Connor could even see more berries growing from the branches at its elbows. And you have worse things to be frightened of, said the monster, but not as a question. Connor looked at the ground, then up at the moon, anywhere but at the monster's eyes. The nightmare feeling was rising in him, turning everything around him to darkness, making everything seem heavy and impossible, like he'd been asked to lift a mountain with his bare hands, and no one would have left, would let him leave until he did. I thought, he said, but had to cough before he spoke again. I saw you watching me earlier when I was fighting with my grandma, and I thought, what did you think? The monster asked when Connor didn't finish. Forget it, Connor said, turning back toward the house. You thought I might be here to help you, the monster said. Connor stopped. You thought I might have come to topple your enemies, slay your dragons. Connor still didn't look back, but he didn't go inside either. You felt the truth of it when I said that you had called for me, that you were the reason I'd come walking, did you not? Connor turned around. But all you want to do is tell me stories, he said. And he couldn't keep the disappointment out of his voice, because it was true. He had thought that. He had hoped that. The monster knelt down so its face was close to Connor's. 
Stories of how I toppled enemies, it said. Stories of how I slew dragons. Connor blinked back at the monster's gaze. Stories are wild creatures, the monster said. When you let them loose, who knows what havoc they might wreak. The monster looked up and Connor followed its gaze. It was looking at Connor's bedroom window, the room where his grandma now slept. Let me tell you a story of when I went walking, the monster said. Let me tell you of the end of a wicked queen and how I made sure she was never seen again. Connor swallowed and looked back at the monster's face. Go on, he said.